Welcome to the GCN Racing News Show. This week on the show, hot or not, we rate two new kits in the men's world tour. We also have yet another Everesting world record, a new headline sponsor for Mitchton Scott, yet more date changes in the revised UCI calendar, and rather controversially, a shorter tour of Flanders. First up, we have a brand new sponsor in the world tour. Last week, Mitchton Scott sent out a press release in which they announced that they will no longer be called Mitchton Scott, but rather Manuela Fundacion. That is a Spanish non-profit charity due to be launched in October by a Spanish gentleman named Francisco Huertas. And it is potentially quite a big overall change for the team. Not only does it get a new kit, which we'll get onto very shortly, and a new name, but potentially a completely new identity. So that team was founded in 2012 as Green Edge, and it was, and still is, Australia's only top-level pro team. But it could now become a Spanish registered team. Now it's great that it appears to have secured its long-term future because it was amongst the teams that looked a little doubtful beyond this year, but it would also be a great shame for there not to be an Australian squad at the top level of the sport. Now it remains to be seen also whether Jerry Ryan will maintain ownership of the team beyond this year. Regardless, the change will officially take place on the 1st of July, which is when more details will also be released. What we do have already is the new kit design. Now you could say it's quite a big departure from what it's looked like up until now. Here it is. What do you think then? Hot or not? Now you can find a link to our poll over on the GCN app on your screen right now where you'll be able to cast your vote. I personally quite like it, I think. Very different to anything else out there at the moment, which in my mind is always a good thing. And incidentally, Scott's emblems are still fairly prominent, even if the company is no longer a title sponsor. Now the other squad to have a change of kit, if not sponsor, is Team Sunweb. They will go from this, which is their traditional red kit, to this new white kit that they'll be wearing once racing resumes. And I must say, I'm a fan of it. I think it's rather sleek. And it also reminds me of a, another kit from a little while ago, although for the life of me, I can't remember which team it is. Anyway, we'd love your opinion on this one as well, the new Team Sunweb kit, hot or not. Again, a link to the app poll is in the description below this video and hopefully also on your screen right now. Now, Team Sunweb were also in the news last week as they are rumoured to be talking to Roman Bardet. The Frenchman has spent his entire career so far with AG2R, but with his contract up at the end of this season, he is reportedly looking for a fresh start. And you'd have to say it makes sense for Team Sunweb, who've lost both Tom de Moulin and Warren Barguil over the last two seasons. Moving on, the Tour of Flanders organisers have said that this year's event, due to take place on October the 18th, will be around 30 kilometres shorter than was originally planned back in April, making it 241 kilometres in length. Now, the unfortunate victim of that is the Moor van Gerardsbergen, which is one of the mainstays of the race in the modern era, and arguably the most well-known climb in the whole of the Flanders region. Now, Flanders Classics have said that the decision was in response to teams' concerns over the crammed calendar of races, but I have to say, I'm a bit gutted about it on both fronts. Firstly, I think that climb belongs in the race, and secondly, I don't think you should be cutting the distance of a monument, even under the special circumstances that we have this year. But then, I am now a bit long in the tooth and a cycling traditionalist, so your view may differ to mine. Now, sticking with the new UCR revised calendar, there have been some more minor tweaks to it last week. Uh, so first up, Il Lombardia is probably the biggest of those. It's been shuffled forward from October the 31st to August the 15th, which is ironically earlier than it ever is. It means that Italy's three biggest one-day races will all take place in the first couple of weeks of August. There are also some date changes to the Tour of Huangxi, which has been moved back to November, and unfortunately, Dwarsdorf Landrun has been cancelled altogether. Now, with the resumption of racing moving ever closer, the Vuelta Burgos is only six weeks away, we're starting to see more and more riders and teams out on training camps. Amongst them is Mark Cavendish, who is currently at altitude with some of his Bahrain Merida teammates in Lavinio. Even sprinters seem to have to do altitude training nowadays. And as some of you will have seen on his Instagram account last week, he also did some riding with the Mitchton Scott pairing of Annemiek van Fleurten and Amanda Spratt, begging them to slow down, which was quite amusing. Uh, Bora Hansgo are having a much more official training camp in Solden, Austria. Around 50 riders and staff ventured there last week for what will be an 18-day training camp. Meanwhile, the Belgian rider Victor Campenarts of NTT Pro Cycling has remained at home in Belgium, 
that he said last week to Sportser that he's turned the dial right up on his altitude tent and has, in effect, simulated 4,700 meters of altitude when he's been sleeping at night for the last three weeks. Now, he's got quite the setup at home, Victor Campanarts. If you didn't see it during our Tour for All broadcast a few weeks ago, here is his mightily impressive indoor training room. So this is my pain cave. I have a vacuum cleaner. Cool photo. Our record mark. Some room for core stability. A homemade sauna with an NTT banner. How I build the sauna, you can see on my YouTube channel. This is where the magic happens. The rollers, Tex Neo rollers, BMC bikes. My big ass TV and Jeff is doing the recon of the Zwift Tour for All. The stage of tonight is doing it with, doing it with the pro triathletes. He's in his last kilometer, 12th position. Looks quite hard. Time trial photo over here. This man is Jeff. Some jerseys I won in my career. Time trial bike. Some altitude lung for my altitude room. There's a hole in the floor going to my room. That is quite the pain cave, really, isn't it? Right, on to the latest Everesting record. Step forward, Lachlan Morton of EF Pro Cycling. The Australian didn't make life easy for himself, making the attempt at altitude at a minimum of 2,200 metres, but he rode 42 times up a 1.9 kilometre climb on the backside of Wrist Canyon in Boulder, Colorado. The attempt, in the end, took him 7 hours and 32 minutes, which was just over 7 minutes faster than Keegan Swenson, who'd set it just a couple of weeks ago, and just after Phil Guyman. Morton's average power over that seven and a half hours was 254 watts, which is seriously impressive for that duration, especially when you consider that he weighs about four kilograms. I think it's going to be quite interesting to see if anybody else tackles the Everesting world record before racing returns at the start of August. Right, everyone, that is it for this week's non-racing racing news show. We'll be back next week with more non-racing racing news, so we'll see you then.